welcome. I just like to say thank you to everyone that has been supporting me and following me through this journey of uh, looking into different topics. Um, mainly looking into Star Fox at the moment, but there's also the mud flood and also, you know, the free electricity and all the information that's been hidden from us. I'd like to try and work and work with others to find the truth, basically. So the names of the star forts in Russia are called Kremlins. In um, in other places, they've, they've got different names for them. And um, China and India, some get called temples. Um, in Australia, they get called um, bastions or, or, or um, you know, like just a normal sort of fort. They're not, you know, like regarded as anything important at all. So let's have a look into this. So as I was just saying, um, Moscow, they call them Kremlin. So even the, the main part of, of Moscow where um, the president Vladimir Putin stays is called the Kremlin, which is basically a citadel. And we have other ones like this in Warsaw, the, um, Italy, Rome, where the Vatican is, that's similar, um, Netherlands, everywhere you look you see these setups. Um, so let's look into it. The Moscow Kremlin, or simply the Kremlin, is a fortified complex at the centre of Moscow, overlooking the Moscow River, to the south, St. Basil's Cathedral and the Red Square to the east, and Alexandra Garden to the west. It is Best known of the Kremlin's Russian citadels. It includes five pal pal palaces, four cathedrals, and an enclosing Kremlin wall with Kremlin towers, in addition within the complex of the Great Grand Kremlin Palace that was formerly the Tsar's Moscow residence. residence. This place is just beautiful. With 2,746,405,000 visitors in 2017. It's a museum now. So, it's also the official residence of the President of the Russian Federation and Museum. The name Kremlin means fortress inside a city and is often used as a... I can't say that word, sorry. Uh, it's a figure of speech in which a thing or a concept is referred to by a name of something closely associated with that of a concept. To refer to the government of the Russian Federation in similar sense to how the White House refers to the Executive Office of the President of the United States, it previously referred to the government of the Soviet Union and the highest members such as the General Secretaries, Premiers, Presidents, Ministers and Commissars. The term criminology refers to the study of so so Soviet and Russian politics. Okay. So it's just basically saying what some of us know. Okay, so the origin of it, the site had been continuously inhabited by... Now, I do want to apologise to my other friends out there, Global Vision and um, Philip, uh, if I, and any other people from Russia, if I say these names wrong. As I have said before, I'm an Aussie, and the only speech I'm good at is Aussie lingo. So I... I want to apologise in advance, so... Okay, so it was inhabited by finno yurgi peoples since the 2nd century BC. The Slavs occupied the southwestern portion of Brotrosky's Hill as early as the 11th century as evidence of a metropolitan seal from the 90, uh, from 1090s, which was unearthed by the Soviet archaeologists in the area. This, though, I hoped... Um, they were a native tribe um, of the East Slavs, uh, built a fortified structure or a grand on the hill where the Niganara River flowed into the Moskiva River. Up to the 14th century, the site was known as the Grand of Moscow. The word Kremlin was first recorded in 1331, though ephthalmologist Max Visa mentions an early appearance in 1320. The Grand was also greatly extended by Prince Yuri Dolgovsky in 1156, destroyed by the Mongolians in 1237 and rebuilt in Oak in 1339. So, Dmitry Donovsky replaced the Oak Walls with a strong citadel of white limestone, limestone in 1330, 
1368 on the basic foundations of the current walls. This fortification withstood a siege by Khan Tokomoski. Um, I can't say the name, I apologize. Dimitri's son, Valasi, resumed construction of the churches and the cloisters in the Kremlin. The newly built Cathedral of Annunciation was painted by Theopames, the Greek. Theopames, the Greek. Andre Rubil. And Prokia. Hop. Proko. Yeah, I apologize. I just cannot say this. And, and saying it is an offense. It really is. So, this monastery looks beautiful. Founded in 1358. Shudo Monastery. It was founded by Demetrius Tudor, Metropolitan uh, Alex. Well, his widow, I can't say this name again, I apologize, established the Asc Ascension Convent in 1397. So the resident of Usars, the Grand Prince Ivan III, organized the reconstruction of the Kremlin, inviting a number of skilled architects from the Renaissance Italy, including Petrus Anotus Solaris, who designed the new Kremlin wall and its towers, and Marcus Rothfuss, who designed the new palace for the prince. It was during this, his reign that the three exact extent cathedrals of the Kremlin, the Deposit, Depo, Depo, Deposition Church and the Palace of the Facets were constructed. The highest building of the city and Moscow, Moscow, Russia and Ivan the Great Bell Tower. Was the, the highest building in the city was the Moscow, Russia, and the Ivan Bell Tower, built in 1505-1508. Geez, they built them really quick, like three years to build build this. Who knows? Today it would take longer. Um, an argument at its present height in six augmented its present height in the 1600s. The Kremlin walls, as they now appear, were built. You know, between 1485 and 1495. Spratsky gates of the wall still bear dedication in Latin praise and purchase and notice Solaris for the design. After construction of the new Kremlin walls and churches was complete, the monarch decreed that no structure should be built in the immediate vicinity of the citadel. The Kremlin was separated from the walled merchant town, Katie Gord. Uh, it was also referred to as the Great Passade in the 16th to 17th century. It is a cultural and historical area within the central part of Moscow and Russia, defined by the remnants of now entirely raised fortification, narrow streets, and very densely built cityscape. But, okay, so I had a th it was, um, the Cam Kremlin was separated by the wall with a 30 meter, 30 meter wide moat. Um, over which St. Basil's Cathedral was constructed during the reign of Ivan the Terrible. Now, I want to know if anyone can tell me if it's true. Is it true that the builder of this tower, when it was built, after it was built, he was killed because he was the only one that could build it and he only wanted to have it, the, the prince only wanted him to have that beautiful building and he didn't want anyone else to have it. Could it be that he built that and it has the the Antiquitech technology in it and he was killed because he knew of that technology? Could that be part of the reason as to why? I mean, you look at the canon here, we, we know what John Levy and Martin have said about these canons and, you know, I fully agree with what Martin has said. Okay, so we're here at... Um, Ivan the Great Bell Tower. Okay. No, can I read that? Yes. So I read that. Okay, so it was constructed in the Reina Ivan Tail. Terrible. The same Tsar also renovated some of his grandfather's palaces, added a new palace and a cathedral for his sons, and endowed the Trinity Metricon inside the Kremlin. What is this? It is a sense a classical assembly church within the Eastern Orthodox tradition. I think um, Philip or Global Vision might be able to help better with it. Um, it was administered by the Trinity Mon Monastery and contained a grateful tower, 
Graceful Tower, Church of the St. Sergius, which is described by foreigners as one of the finest in the country. During the time of troubles, the Kremlin was held by the Polish forces for two years, between 21st of September 1610 and 26th of October 1612. The Kremlin's lib lib liberation by the volunteer army of the Prince Dmitry Kohoski and Kumuza Mine paved the way for the election of Mikhail Romanik, Romanov as the new Tsar. During his reign, and that of his sons Alexis and the grandson Fedor, the eleven domed Upper Seville Cathedral, Armoral Gate, Tram Palace, Amusement Palace, and the Palace of the Patriot Nikon were built. Following the death of Alexis' son Fedor, the Moscow Uprising and the Moscow Uprising of 1682, Tsar Peter escaped with much difficulty from the Kremlin and as a result developed a dislike for it. Three decades later, Peter abandoned the residence of his forefathers for the new capital of St. Petersburg, so he didn't feel comfortable. Okay, although it's still um, used for coronation ceremonies, the Kremlin was abandoned and neglected until 1773 when Catherine the Great engaged Basil Bone. I can't say this, I'm not going to... Um, be rude, so to build her new residence there. He produced a bombastic neoclassical design of a heroic scale which involved the demolition of several churches and palaces as well as a portion of the Kremlin wall. After the preparations were over, construction was delayed due to the lack of funds. Several years later, architect Sky supervised the reconstruction and dismantled sections of the wall and some of the structures of the Shadow Monastery and built the spacious luxury office of the Senate. Since adapted for the use of the principal workplace of the President of Russia. Look how beautiful that building is. Like the, the, the buildings are just gorgeous. Uh, I follow another guy called Gordon Bancroft and he goes through all these areas and, and it's just beautiful, these areas. The buildings are just gorgeous. Okay, so it's, you know, offices. So what I don't understand is why it was abandoned for so long. You know, like, I know they were having wars and whatnot, but surely they would have that fortified during the wars that were going on, you know, Napoleon and, and all those things that we were told. Um, French forces occupied Kremlin for a little while in 1812. Okay, so French forces occupied the Kremlin from the 2nd of September to the 11th of October 1812, following the French invasion of Russia. When Napoleon retreated from Moscow, he ordered the whole Kremlin to be blown up. The Kremlin arsenal, several portions of the Kremlin wall, and several wall towers were destroyed by explosions and the facet chamber. And the other churches were damaged by fire. Explosions continued for three days from the 21st to the 23rd of October 1812. However, rain damaged the fuses and damage was less severe than intended. Restoration works were undertaken in 1816 to 1819, supervised by this guy. During the remainder of the reign of Alexandria, Dandria I, several architectural structures were renovated in the fanciful neo-Gothic style, but many others having been condemned as disuse or dilapidated, including the buildings of Trinity, Metropon, and were torn down. Wow. So, I'm wondering, you know, did the, was there a comet and volcano eruptions and, um, you know, like there was sort of all that going on and other countries in the world were looking for food or were they raiding the countries of the people that had, had been hit the most by these comets? Because if you look at the lands of Russia, you can see it's been hit by comets a lot. So, volcanoes, comets, all that kind of stuff. 1812, were they there to rob them, basically? To come in and say, okay, this has happened, we're taking over now. Okay, um, so this, this uh, Nicholas I was not satisfied with the Grand Palace, which had been erected in the 1750s to design of Francisco Restil. The elaborate brocade structure was demolished. 
So why were all these buildings, these grand buildings, built and then just suddenly demolished? I mean, that would have cost a fortune and, and, and money and, and, and furnishings at that stage were, would have been expensive. So I just don't... The wars that were going on, so... How did they have the money to build all this when a couple of minutes, a couple of pages saying they didn't have the money? Okay, so I'll leave links up in the description, but um, I'm not going to get into all of it. Um, so, this, 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 this is what I'm wondering about whether some of these places are like, um, you know, like pre made and then sent there. Like, could these have been pre made? The existing Kremlin walls and towers were built by Italian masters from 1485 to 1495. The irregular triangle of the Kremlin wall encloses an area of 275,000 square metres, um, 2,960,000 square feet. Its overall length is 225 metres, 2,444 yards, but the height ranges from 5 to 19 metres. Depending on the terrain, the wall thickness is between 3.5 metres and 6.5 metres, 11 and 21 foot. Originally, there were 18 Kremlin towers, but their number increased to 20 in the 17th century. All but three of the towers are square in pain. The highest tower is the this one. I can't say it, sorry. Which was built up to its present height of 80 metres, which is 260 foot in 1495. How did they get up so high? You know, like, we didn't have the tools and all this kind of stuff. Like, we didn't have cranes, electric cranes, and, yeah. Most towers were originally crowned with wooden tents, extent brick tents with stripes of coloured tiles go back to the 1680s. So, the Cathedral Square is the heart of the Kremlin. It is surrounded by six buildings, including three cathedrals. The Cathedral of the Dominion was completed in 1479 to the main church of Moscow, where all the Tsars were crowned. The massive limestone facade, capped with its five golden coppers, was the design of a restore. I can't say the name again, I apologise. Several important metropolitans and patriarchs are buried there, including Peter and Marakai. The gilded three-domed cathedral of Annunciation was completed next in 1489, only to be reconstructed to a nine-domed designed a century later. So did this, it like a, a power, are these cathedrals old power, free energy power stations and they had too much energy being drawn for it so they had to extend it, could that be why? Just thinking out of the box. There are two domestic churches of the Metropolitans and the Patriots, Moscow, the Church of the Twelve Apostles, 1653 and 1656, and then the Equisid One Dome Church of the Deposition of the Virgin's Road, built by this guy from 1484 to 1488. You're, what? You're telling me it took four years just to build that, the church, this one? I don't believe it. Okay, another notable structure is the Ivan the Great Bell Tower on the northeast corner of the square, which is said to mark the exact centre of Moscow and resemble a, resemble a burning candle. Completed in 1600, it is 81 metres, 266 feet high. Until the Russian Revolution, it was the tallest structure in the city, as con construction of buildings taller than that was forbidden. Its 21 bells would sound the alarm if any enemy was approaching. The upper part of the structure was destroyed by the French during the Napoleon invasion and had to be rebuilt. The Tsar, the Tsar Bell, the largest bell in the world, stands on a pedestal next to the tower. So why did they only just ruin the top part? Was it because the top part is where all the copper and um, slate work together to... Um, grab the static electricity and convert it, so how did this bell tower, where did it sit? But how did they get the bell up? It's massive and it's got a crack on it, like how did that 
crack happened, like, it would have had to have some force to do that. Okay. The oldest structure still standing is Ivan III's uh, Palace of Facets, 1491, which holds imperial thrones. The next oldest is the first home of the royal family, the Tom Tram Palace. Look how beautiful these places are. The northern corner of the Kremlin is occupied by the Arsenal, which was originally built for Peter the Great in 1707. The southwestern section of the Kremlin holds an armory building built in 1851 to the Renaissance to rival design. Apparently a museum. Oh, there's a helipad as well. Okay. So I'm sure a lot of people have seen what the Kremlin looks like and everything, but I just wanted to share like, how beautiful these buildings are and that it's still standing. I was talking to one of my subscribers about how, you know, the ones that don't go with the new world order are cut off and yeah. So it's a citadel you can see, similar to Warsaw, similar to Italy. We see them all over the world. Now this. Could this have fired out like a shock wave? Not these. I don't believe these would fit in there. Like, were these like a, um, you know, where you get the shock wave from a bomb blast? Like, you get the. Now, I've seen videos where they do have cannons that can actually. It, it, you don't even see it. It just goes. It sends out, um, energy. Just, like, and it knocked everything over. So. Could these have actually been some sort of technology that we don't know about? So this is the bell. I just look how huge it is. Like look at that man there. It, it, that bell is just huge. And how would they get it up on the tower? It's unreal. Look how beautiful. And look at this antiquity. Oh yeah. For anyone that says they're lightning, they're not. They're lightning um, tower things, they're not. This one's a new building. The Sevier Tower. Look how beautiful it is. I think the clocks have been put there to hide the original things. If you watch Martin, um, on uh, Flat Earth British, he, he goes into great detail and describes how most of these things were. And I'm the Great Bell Tower. Now, where did the bell fit? Like, was it here? Somewhere? And still, how did they get it up with the rest of them? The Tomashitin Cathedral. Sorry for saying it wrong. Look at this tower, 260 feet, massive. Now, one of my other subscribers has a video where you can see all this, like, light up at night. It's like, um, twinkling, like a, a, a Christmas light, twinkling. So here's a bird's eye view of it. I'll take you to Google next. And of course we've got the active charge, the birds. So here we've got the Kremlin here. See it's all along here. All down there. And then if you have a look. This is where it's got the 30 metre wide moat to um, protect the moat in there, I'm not sure. But here where all these markings are were where there were towers. So this is the um, 
next one I'd like to show you all, and it's unreal, it's massive, and um, it's got forts in the ocean. So we've got down here, I'm sorry it's not loading properly, this place is just amazing. Markers are where they've got towers, gun towers. How did they build them out in the ocean is what I know. I know you throw rocks out and, and you know, you build it up, all that kind of stuff, but how did they build it back then when everything was just horse and buggy or ox and cart? stuff has been removed. There was something there, like a cannon or something. Same again, it's been removed. All being destroyed, whatever was here. So what we got here, it's got some stuff in here, there, the lighthouse there. You can see the dirt's piled up over it. Another lighthouse. This was bombed by um, the Germans. I'll take you to the Wikipedia page in a minute. This is uh, the fence wall that went all around. Looks like there was something there too. You can see it here. Look. Comes out, Damn. comes out there, it goes around the whole line. gun placements here. These look like they swing out to clothes and tights. So you look how many guns or orcs goes in on the look of it. Looks like they go in underground. But it looks like there's still silo there. Same here. 